Keep it up. I, I like it when I can see your hands. <laughs> How are you tonight? You sound in a good mood. Great. Yeah. You got it. Okay. Yeah, I, I did it. Yeah. Yeah. That's your consensus, huh? Uh. I'm just not the beard type of guy, I guess. <laughs> I'll tell you the reason I shaved it off. Um, I realize I'm going to work Tuesday, today, right? <clears throat> February the 12th. Lincoln's birthday. I said it's a bad day for me with a beard to appear in a theater. <laughs> I said, that was enough. I was starting to look like Orson Welles after Pritikin. You know? <laughs> a lot of people were very nice. A lot of people wrote in and gave their opinions. Boy, did they ever. Uh, tell you another reason I shaved. Saturday, a lady came up to me and says, you know, you and your brother make the most terrific cough drops. <laughs> anyway, so that's that. Another chapter in life gone. Anyway, well, you look good tonight. You know, I never thought I would see a... A February audience that got a tan while waiting in line. <laughs> now, the, the rest of the country... I feel guilty talking about the weather here in Southern California, knowing what is happening around the rest of the country. I think Pittsburgh had six inches of snow yesterday. It's below... Th below... Th oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> what do you care? You're on vacation, right? <laughs> Let them freeze. No, it's, uh, <laughs> it is incredible, but it's, uh, it's nice out here. Yeah. 85 degrees today in Southern California. <laughs> this, of course, this, of course, unless you get too excited, will be followed by the fire, earthquake, and flood season. <laughs> As I mentioned, today is Lincoln's birthday, though it is a little bit confusing. I don't know about you. Uh, Burbank schools were off yesterday. Uh, city offices are closed today. Some businesses are not going to observe the holiday until this coming Friday. In addition to that, in all this time frame, we have Valentine's Day and Washington's birthday. Um, but I found a perfect all-purpose card that covers all three holidays. It uh, shows a tall guy sitting in the theater um, eating a heart-shaped cherry pie. <laughs> That joke was too long. <laughs> the NBC commissary, as it does every year, is having a special in honor of Lincoln. They are serving a soup of the day in a stovepipe hat. <laughs> Lincoln, of course. <laughs> Boy, you look dapper tonight. Doesn't he look sharp? Very sharp. Spring. Spring, yeah. That's it. Banana cream pants for spring. <laughs> Banana cream pants? Oh. Sounds like one of those fashion, you know, guys yeah. who does the fashion yeah. Mr. Sevenson's wearing banana cream pants. <laughs> Anyways, you know, today is Lincoln's birthday. I guess February the 12th, right? I guess recognized by most people or historians as, um, what, the greatest president of the United States? There could be an argument there. Um, Ronald Reagan, for example, and Abe Lincoln have a lot in common. Um, they're both tall and love to chop wood. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> but no. See, Lincoln was a great storyteller. Now, Abe would have had a finish to that driving up the California coastline story. <laughs> <laughs> but you can tell when a president is really famous when department stores have sales <clears throat> named after them. Did you ever hear of a Millard Fillmore white sale? <laughs> You know, I watch a lot of television this week. You know who I'm getting a little tired of? And I'm sure he's a nice guy. The guy who does those commercials for the Australian Tourist Bureau. I mean, he's nice. What's his name? Paul Hogan, I think. And he's very big in Australia, but the guy tries to get a, as many Australian phrases into a sentence as he can. Have you heard that? Good day, mate. You know? <laughs> Come on down, put a shrimp. I told President Reagan that he wants peace in his homeland. He was referring, of course, to Beverly Hills. <laughs> It was, quite an, uh, it was quite an interesting experience for the Reagans. Followed was the poorest person they've ever had over for dinner. 
Well, let's see. What else? Uh... <laughs> Here's the latest uh, bulletin from Russia. You can never tell when you read the news reports. Uh, they keep talking about Konstantin Chernenko, the premier of the Soviet Union. Apparently, he uh, failed to show up for an important meeting in Moscow. But official word from the Kremlin is he's on vacation. Now, actually, we found out he is not sick. He's hiding out as part of the Help Beautify Moscow campaign. Uh, and I wish I was with him. That's for that joke. Look, at least we know he's not dead. No, because if he's dead, the Politburo in Russia would say he had a cold. So we know he's not dead. Russians have a funny political system. You know the way they select a new leader? They get together and they take a, a secret ballot on who looks the most ridiculous in a coat and a hat. <laughs> the band always likes weird jokes. <laughs> but NBC is taking advantage of, uh, of all this press stuff coming out of Russia. Now they're going to do a new, uh, a new movie, television movie called Moscow Wives. <laughs> Stars John Candy as Mrs. Chernenko. <laughs> anyway... We have, you're in a good mood tonight. We've got a good show for you. And later on, budget director David Stockman will be out here and tell us that General Custer's relatives are still getting his pension. <laughs> anyway, tonight, we have, I was going to say, one of the great all-time baseball players, and I closed my lips on that. He is not one of the all-time baseball players. He played baseball uh, some years ago. He, maybe that's overstating it. He was on a ball team, a major league ball team. But we refer to him affectionately as Mr. Baseball. Mr. Bob Euchre is with us tonight. We also have... Gentlemen... Gentlemen, I'm sure you all know who used to be uh, with his brothers, the Hudson brothers, Mark Hudson, who's a fine young actor. And... Mr. David Horowitz will be out here later and uh, tell, you, tell you how you can get your money back if you do not like tonight's show. And you're going to get back every cent you paid to get in. So, so thank you for coming. We'll be back in just a couple of seconds. Thank you. Thank you very much. Whoopee. We are here. Yes. Got rid of it. Uh, you know the real reason I got rid of it? There was so much talk about it. It was ridiculous, you know, for a man growing a little beard. Talked to my sister, Catherine, the other day. She lives in Pacific Grove, California. And she said, what are you doing? <laughs> my sister. I said, well, what do you mean? She said, I saw she says, you remind me of our father. Got the razor right away. <laughs> My father was a wonderful man, yeah. and I kind of loved him dearly. But when she said that, I said, yeah. maybe this isn't the right thing to do. <laughs> anyway, it was fun. Got it out of my yeah. system. Today, of course, is uh, Abraham Lincoln's birthday, February the 12th. I had a letter from a gentleman by the name of Ed Lucare from, where is Mr. Lucare from? From New York City. He says, thought you and Johnny would like to know who the real 12th United States president was. Here's an excerpt from a book called Famous People You Never Knew Existed. Forget what the history books say, according to this book. The 12th president of the United States was, for a brief time, David Rice Acheson, a man who was so obscure that Chester A. Arthur seems a, Arthur seems a household word by comparison. <laughs> now listen to this. At exactly noon on March 4th, 1849, Zachary Taylor was scheduled to succeed James Polk as chief executive. March 4th was a Sunday, and Taylor, a devout old general, refused to violate the Sabbath by taking the oath of office. Thus, under the Succession Act of 1792, Missouri Senator David Rice Acheson, as president pro tem of the Senate, automatically became president of the United States. I guess he was uh, president for uh, that day. And on Monday, at Monday <laughs> noon, Taylor took over the reins of the government. But anyway, Mr. Uh, Mr. Acheson was president of the United States for one day. One day. And a, he did a fine job. Oh, what a job. <laughs> and we've never thanked Mr. Oh, Acheson. I've never really so. thanked him enough. Hey, Country was still here on Monday. That's right. Yeah. We ought to have a David Rice Atchison national holiday. <laughs> you know, president for a day. 
Anyway, that was instantly we got that letter because we were going to do a little piece of material tonight about this book, which is called, it's from, uh, let me see who the authors are. I'm giving credit here. Sid Frank and Arden Davis Melnick wrote a book called The President's Tidbits and Trivia. Trivia seems to be the rage around nowadays. And they came up with a lot of new little unknown facts about people that you may or may not know. Would you like to hear some of them? I would, yes, very much. Well, and they would, too. Otherwise, we're going to sit here. Wouldn't you? Yes, you would. Well, right. you know how to coach him, don't you? <laughs> Today, of course, is Lincoln's birthday. The 22nd is George Washington's birthday. Next Monday is what they call President. President's Day. We honor all the presidents. Now, from this book, I'm going to read some of the... We type some of them out. Four presidents died millionaires. Did you make a guess as to who they are? You don't have to. Roosevelt, I would guess. Franklin Roosevelt, John Kennedy, Lyndon Johnson, and Herbert Hoover were all millionaires when they died. Grant died broke, President Grant, but he made a half a million dollars posthumously from sales of his memoirs. I didn't know that. <laughs> well, his estate obviously yeah. did. John Tyler, not one of our better-known presidents, had 15 children. The last one fathered at age 70. Harvard College has produced the most presidents, five, followed by William and Mary, Princeton, and West Point, with two each. William Howard Taft had a cow graze on the White House lawn at one time. <laughs> Woodrow Wilson had a flock of sheep grazing on the White House lawn. Now, Taft, I guess, was the first one. Was he the first one to put a bathtub in the White House? I think so. President Taft was a very large man. He, he wasn't the first one? Who was the first one to have the bathtub? Fillmore. Fillmore? <laughs> Good Millard was Millard, the first yeah. one. Taft put a bigger one. Taft put a big, he big didn't one. put a big enough one because I'll tell you what happened. <laughs> According to this, he once got stuck in the White House bathtub. <laughs> it took hours and several strong men to free him. <laughs> now here's one is really kind of weird. I didn't know this. Herbert Hoover and his wife occasionally spoke to each other in Chinese in front of White House guests so no one would know what they were talking about. <laughs> now I did not know that no. Mr. Hoover and his wife spoke Chinese no. at all. Now, who was the only president to hold a pilot's license? I did not know this. The only president to hold a pilot's license. Johnson? Dwight Eisenhower. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. One of our presidents used to be a bartender. You should... I saw somebody said Nixon. Nixon. <laughs> no, I am not a bartender. Hey. <laughs> no. Abraham Lincoln once took out a saloon license to enable him to dispense spirits at the establishment of Barry and Lincoln in Springfield, Illinois in 1833. So Abraham Lincoln was actually saying down there, one more for the... For the what? The, the Gipper. The, the pass? One more for the Gipper. Well, no, one more. Well, those are, those are some interesting... You know, it's, I've been wanting to read up on things like that because I'm very fascinated by the presidency. But I thought you'd have to read volume after volume after volume. And look at that book. It's not even an inch thick. And yet within the covers, there's everything in the world you want to know about a president. Well, you are wrong, hotline breath. Let me give you... <laughs> there is yet more? We had our own staff do a little research the past few days. Right. Here's some little bits of trivia that did not make this, this tome. Oh. Teddy Roosevelt got the name Rough Rider because of his habit of wearing sandpaper boxer shorts. <laughs> The first president who was ever attacked was George Washington. A disgruntled office seeker threw a beaver at his mouth. He had, he had wooden teeth, as you know. Right. Washington had wooden teeth. Right. Here's one that is really intriguing. John Quincy Adams took pride in being able to tell the future. He was a psychic. He proved it on his deathbed in 1848 by screaming, Telly Savalas will be Kojak. <laughs> that was in 18... <laughs> that is incredible. Didn't make the book. No. Many presidents... Many presidents... <laughs> many presidents wore facial hair, but only one, Millard Fillmore, had hair on his feet. <laughs> It was known as the werewolf of Washington. Most people... <laughs> Many of our early presidents wore wigs. We know that, right? Only one, Franklin Pierce, 
also wore ladies' lingerie. <laughs> Before finally being elected, Grover Cleveland had unsuccessfully run for president as Grover Buffalo, Grover Jersey City, <laughs> and Grover Milwaukee. And when he changed it to Grover Cleveland, he got in. He got in. You think Ulysses S. Grant is buried in Grant's tomb? Yeah. Not so. He is actually kept in the beer case at a Washington 7-Eleven. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln, for example, did not have a beard. What appears to be a beard was in reality a thin cat sleeping on his face. <laughs> Lincoln was a kindly man, and a pussycat would come up and... Of the... Of the 40 presidents, 36 have had a crumpled bar napkin with Liz Taylor's phone number on it taken out of their pants pockets by the White House valet. <laughs> when John Adams became president, his suits only cost 50 cents, horses cost a dollar apiece, and the Pentagon was only paying $200 for outhouse seat covers. <laughs> Another piece of trivia here. Whenever... Billy Carter visited the White House. Jimmy Carter ordered the gardeners to slip London fog raincoats over the rose bushes. <laughs> George Washington never told a lie. However, Martha had to fake it throughout their married life. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson, one of our greatest presidents, a man of many accomplishments was most proud that one day his name would be used for a TV sitcom about a black dry cleaner. <laughs> President Buchanan was a lifelong bachelor. Did you know that? Some feel this was because he worked too hard to look for a wife. Others believe it was because he once got his zipper caught in Eli Whitney's cotton gin. <laughs> and we have one more. Ronald Reagan is now the oldest living president. At the end of his term, he will be the oldest living thing. <laughs> so, those are a few little... Lincoln was a kindly man. Lincoln was a kindly man. He liked animals. Okay. We'll be back in a moment, but first, we're happy to welcome a new advertiser to The Tonight Show, Benny Hanna, Oriental Entrees. We shall return. My first guest, uh, we humbly refer to as, uh, and proudly, as Mr. Baseball. And after hanging up his baseball glove, which was mostly unused, uh, <laughs> Bob Euchre did many things. He's now the announcer for the Milwaukee Braves, and you're going to be seeing more of Bob on TV starting March 4th. He'll be the co-star. What did I say? The Brewers. Well, the Milwaukee, Milwaukee Brewers. Brewers. What did I say? The Braves. The Brewers, of course. He'll be the co-star of a new series called Mr. Belvedere. Would you welcome Mr. Baseball, Bob Euchre. It is nice. Braves? Oh, well, I, I didn't think of that. I'm, you, know, you know, when I really read that, I knew better, but somebody had on the card the Milwaukee Braves. Really? It says Milwaukee Braves right on the card. You... Well, that's where I started. That's where I had my biggest year, yeah. <laughs> Was that your biggest? Yeah, well, then I went down from there, you know. <laughs> when you say big year, um, you remember what you batted that year? Uh, I don't want to go into that, John. Okay, you know, I <laughs> People think I'm bragging all the time, I know. you know. Did you ever see any baseball cards? I guess kids still exchange baseball cards. You ever see one with your... Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, one of your people backstage had one tonight. Uh... Are you putting me on? No, really. Uh, well, they have one back there tonight. Uh, it's a blank, but uh, you can see an outline of it. <laughs> it's just a... Uh, Temper stenciled yeah, it in. It's yeah. a stencil type thing, but uh, <laughs> you just barely see it. Uh, well, I don't want to start this interview off on a, on a down note tonight. But, as you know, um, the Baseball Hall of Fame just made... Their uh, selections yeah. again, yeah. and uh, well, uh, needless to say, you didn't make it. No, I, uh, uh, are you? Uh, were you upset? No, I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm. I'm going to say this right now because we've talked about this before. Now there's a there's a hint here and there that they want to put me in. You know, well now I'm not going. <laughs> now I'm not going. I see. I knew this would happen sooner or later. You know where, you know they keep putting you down, putting you down, 
Now they want me, and I'm not going. And you're going to reject it? No way. No way. Well, you're you're a principled man. Well, you're the first guy that told me that. Yeah. uh, Well, (laughs) it's nice. You used to get very upset. Freddie is holding a card there. I thought you were putting me on. No. Can can I take a look at it? Sure. One of the one one of the stage hands. There it is. Here. I'll be dog. Peggy had it back there. Bob Euchre, Milwaukee Braves. Yep. Turn it over and see some of the big, big years I had. Catcher, height uh, six one, weight one eighty, bats right, throws right. Born your birth date? I won't give that. It doesn't bother me. Johnny. Nineteen thirty-five. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bob, who can smack a long ball. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Wait a minute. Is this uh... <laughs> someone ahead. like two hundred feet? They're unbelievable. <laughs> And that was before the lively ball. Well, that's, yeah. that was when they had the dead ball. You had to see it to believe it. I mean, I can't. I can tell you, but you had to see it to believe it. <laughs> no, here's here's a batting average here of one one forty seven. Well, I was screwing around. I didn't, you know. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't really go for it that year. I'm trying to see what your best year is. Your best year was. Uh, do you know what it was? I think around two fifty. No, by golly, you had when you were with Boise. Is yeah. that a farm team? Well, I was in the service out there. Uh, <laughs> I hit, uh, I think I hit 312 out You there. sure did? Yeah. My God. That's well, three for nine. <laughs> oh, my God. That's probably, probably kind of valuable, isn't it? They're up to, uh, that's worth about a buck and a half. Buck and a half. They're really, they're really going up. Okay, we're going to come back and uh, we'll talk some more to Mr. Baseball. Stay where you are, friends. We shall return. Let's get off of baseball just for a second. Yeah. You, you're big in the world of commercials now. I see you all over the place. That must be interesting work. Well, the uh, beer commercials, uh, you were talking about that truck that turned over this morning. It wasn't ours. It was one of ours. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, no, we were out here uh, We were out here last week, Johnny, doing the uh, reunion spot. Uh, well, what, about 30, 35 reunion. guys in that? There was about 30 guys, and uh, it was a golf outing this year. And uh, it should be out in March. It's going to be a very funny sp- My scenes are underwater. Underwater. Yep. May and, I ask uh, why? Well, uh, my in in my part of the commercial, I hit a hit a shot, and it goes into the lake. Don't tell me. And instead of taking a two-stroke penalty shot, uh, <laughs> I go in and I go in and play it. We we did it at a uh, we did it at a studio uh, where they filmed the uh, Poseidon Adventure and the uh, <laughs> played it as it lies, huh? Yeah, I went down. Uh, Excuse me, I had divers, uh, three divers working with me. I had working off air tanks. And uh, when I'd get ready to hit my shot, I'd give them my hose and take the mask off and then go through. And they had about 30 fish in there. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I know everybody's going to ask, were you really underwater when I did it? And I wasn't. You were underwater. It's, it's a very funny spot. It's going to be a great spot. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, is this, is that a series ring? Yeah, this is a series ring, and this is a uh, American League championship ring oh. from Milwaukee a couple of years ago. I stole them both. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. This is the one. Remember, I told you when we had the award ceremonies, they threw it in the grass. Remember? Oh yeah, you had. They to threw go. it. Yeah, I looked for it in the grass. The rest of the guys were standing on the line. They got theirs, but they, just... they threw mine in the grass. <laughs> as long as you got one. Oh, my family loved it. It was a great thrill for all my folks. Now, about this time of year, you would be going into spring training, as the Brewers are, right? Yeah. Uh, spring training comes. You talked about that series, Johnny. I got coming up. Uh, yeah, Mr. Call Bel- Mr. Belvedere. Mr. Uh, Belvedere. The old Clifton Webb uh, series and. Uh, uh, with uh, Christopher Hewitt, plays in the show, uh, Eileen Groff and three right. youngsters, uh, Rob Stone, uh, Tracy Wells, and a youngster by the name of Bryce Beckham. Uh-huh. I play my kids in that, so I'm looking forward to that. I really am. Uh, yeah. Are you a good actor? Uh, yeah. Uh, that's amazing. <laughs> I, suppose, uh, I suppose what you can do well in one uh, area, uh, from baseball, move right into acting. Well, and... you've been saying that all the time, and yeah. it's true. Uh, I, I, I never wanted to say it, but it's, it's true. It's amazing. I think you got a shot at it. But, uh, no, we go to spring training, Johnny, uh, uh, Another week. If you uh, had start... to go to spring training right now, how long would it take you uh, to get in shape? I, I would know be all uh, this year, but I mean, basically. When I was playing? Yeah. Right now, no, I, I tell you what, right now I would be to the point because you don't want to peak, you know, like too early in spring well, training. Of course. So, like when I would go, like right now, another week to go, I would be at a point where maybe uh, I could run maybe a block without stopping. <laughs> and uh, maybe I could do. You know, easy, real bam, 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 maybe four sit ups. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Consecutive, maybe. Yeah, bang, right yeah. in a row, not right. stopping. I understand. And uh, then, like, at the end of spring training, like the final day, when we're ready to break camp, right. 
Like I could run, uh, like say if I was on base. Right. And the guy behind me hit a home run. Like I could score without stopping. I mean, <laughs> Maybe do 10 sit-ups right in there, you know? Yeah. Uh, but, you know, a lot of guys peak too early. I never That's used to right. do that. Oh, it's good to, good to know your limits. Same thing with announcing now, you know. No, how about that? You don't have to, uh... Don't Strike you? three! I, I work on that once in a while. <laughs> I'll do that. Uh, uh, you practice I'll at it? Oh, yeah, I walked down the street once. He got him! You know, people... <laughs> uh, but you gotta... You because gotta you have to create in the booth that, that feeling. Exactly. That... You can't just go to spring training and start, you know? You gotta be... Uh, you know, I do. You sit in the bar once. He called him out. You know, <laughs> people. strike three called. You know, you got yeah. you got to get in there. You know, and the, you gotta... a lot of the guys used to say he came to play, or he, he's an all around. I do that. Player. Yeah, you, you he came that? to play. He came, he to, came play. to play. What what a guy comes to the park players? liquored up. He came to play. Yeah. You, know? <laughs> you got to play. You can't. You... A lot of guys play straight. That's easy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Tough to play when you're really in the bag. I suppose. Uh, well, you don't remember a lot of bad days. That's what I like to play. <laughs> But no, there are, uh, you know, announcers do, uh, there are certain announcers, you know, they have favorite things. There was a guy in, in Chicago, Johnny, I used to love this guy, his name was Bob Elson. Mm -hmm. He used to do the White Sox games, you know. And he would do the play-by-play -play and tell you something that happened outside of the game without ever missing a play, you know. He'd be doing the play-by-play. -play. <clears throat> Here's the wind-up and the pitch to Fox, it's a ball, the one outside. Well, stepping into our booth is an old friend of ours, and boy, when I tell you this guy's name, here is a strike on the outside corner. You know, this guy was a star of years past, played Olympic baseball, big league star in the major leagues, and a good friend of ours, here's a ball that went outside. <laughs> Two balls and a strike now to Fox. You know, as we look at our old friend, and he looks so healthy, and... Boy, the woman that he married, when I tell you her name, you're going to be awfully surprised. Here is a swing and a pop-up on the right side. <laughs> Should be an easy play, and it is, and the inning is over. And we say goodbye to our old friend, and thanks for stopping in. <laughs> we'll be back in a moment. Stay where you are. <laughs> <laughs> My next, next guest is one of the uh, co-stars of a new comedy series called Sarah, which will be seen again tomorrow night at 9.30. He was originally a member, you probably remember, of a rather outrageous comedy troupe, the Hudson Brothers, who had their own show, and they made a lot of records and performed in concerts throughout the country. Would you welcome, please, Mark Hudson. Mark? <laughs> Well, I guess that's what I could have looked forward to, although none of that color if I'd have yeah. stayed with it for another five or six months, I suppose. It's, it's the first two weeks that's really is the toughest. It drove me nuts no, trying to sleep at night. Yeah, no matter what you do, you look like Willie Nelson. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, yeah. And, and the, the, the rash and the ingrown hairs and all that stuff, but afterwards, it's real, you distinguished. And, <laughs> what are the advantages now of letting it grow to uh, maturity? A, a couple of things. Number one, it, it, I grew it because it makes me look a bit more intelligent. It hides my stupidity, so to speak. And <laughs> people always used to think if you yeah. had a beard, a lot of professors in college yes. had them. You say, hey, he's got to be yeah, but... super intelligent. Yeah, and and it's it's pretty good with the girls after a while because it, they kind of like a guy with a beard. You know, more women said while I was growing that piece of strange adornment that they liked it more than guys. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I, I never could put, put that together. Yeah, well, I have girls around me all the time. Yeah, just yeah. Just saying. Like now, you know, it's surrounded, yeah. <laughs> surrounded by girls. <laughs> anyway, when you guys were working, you, you did a lot of uh, weird, bizarre, mm -hmm. off-the-wall comedy. Do you miss it at all? Well, you, it, it's weird. You know, this is the first thing I've ever done. I, I'm being real honest now. I'm real scared because this is like, I've always had my brother Bill, my brother Brad, yeah. either side of me. A um, little strength there, you mean? Yeah, I mean, oh, sure. If, if, I, if I were to be bombing, they could save me. You know, it's really, really is, is a security thing in there that I don't have now. So I want to hold your hand? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Is this why the brothers left? Yes, that's why uh, they left. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it, it was, it's, it's kind of yeah. strange, but like, I find now that there's something relaxing about it as well. Yeah. Like in doing this new show, it's kind of nice not to be that zany. It's kind of nice to have the... Just, just kind of relax and kind of be bit. normal, like really act, act for a change. You guys used to open for a lot of uh, rock groups. Yeah. Now, that's got to be tough. We used to have a couple of young comedians on who went out and had to open for rock groups. 
And some of the stories they told were hysterical because the kids are out there in a frenzy waiting for uh, Rolling Stones or right. whoever it might have been. And the poor guy is out there trying to do 25 or 30 minutes, and they're killing him. Yeah, you know, you, the girls are all going for the rock stars, and the poor comic was out there, yeah, you, you know, you, filling time. Is that a little bit of a... You, you find they usually don't care. Yeah. You know, you are there, and you're virtually a piece of meat. You do a few lines, and they say, you know, bring on Mick or or the, the next rock band, and that's what they're really looking forward to. Yeah. So what, what I did is I did the comedy for maybe a week, and then I got into rock and roll because it was... You could score more that way. Uh, and <laughs> You mean and, write more songs? No, I mean... Oh, oh I see. Like the beard, you know. Yeah. And, and that's, and that's what, what I went for. You, that you must know. have been a strange period because you went with all that, then that rock era. Yeah. There was... Um, it was really weird. But, you know, there was one time... Uh, just as an instance, when we were on the road and we were playing someplace, and I came, I came back, and there was a girl in my room, and I didn't know, you know, why she was there. I thought maybe it was a gift from my brothers, or maybe the promoter. You know, I didn't, I didn't know. And she was beautiful. I mean, man, major everything. And yeah. And I, I said, well, okay. I was young and single sure. at the time. I think I was single. <laughs> yeah. And I said, well, okay. So we made, like, made love all night. Really? And everything was, you know, everything was great. And, and then the next morning, my brother called me up and said, you know. And missed the plane, so I you know, shaved and showered and got ready. And as as I was leaving and stuff, the the girl was still in my bed, and I was walking towards the door with my bags and stuff. And she woke up and said, "Hey, hey, 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 hey." I said, "What? What? What? What?" Huh. She said, uh, "How about some money?" I said, "Oh, no, just give me a box of chocolates." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this was, this wasn't a true loss of but, love. No, 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 no. I see. No. But that, that's where those years, those years are over now. Married, all, yeah, children. you're all married, settled down with kids and everything. Yeah, it's I'm like a, a new wave, Ozzy Nelson. Yeah. It's, <laughs> uh, oh, don't you have one child? No, I have two. I have yeah. two: a 12-year-old girl and a uh, five-year-old girl. And mm -hmm. uh, oddly enough, in the show, I have a five-year-old son. Right. And and it's kind of a a strange thing because I would come home and. He made me a gift. He made these real huge paper fishes. The little boy in the show. Right. We become very friendly. And he made a little fish and a big fish. And I came home one night after work and set my, my, uh, my jacket on the doorknob and started eating dinner, talking to my wife. And my little girl, Sarah, came by and saw these fish and just kind of looked at it and walked away. And then, well, obviously, she knew it was child art. Came back again and looked at him again and grabbed my coat and left the room. I thought, oh, gosh, you know, the, obviously I'm going to try to be like Mr. Rogers and let her get all the, yeah. you know, the child envy and all that sort of stuff out of the way. And um, I said, okay, I'm going to go in the living room and see what's cooking. And I went in there, and there she was, and the jacket was there, but fish were gone. I said, Sarah, uh, what happened to Daddy's fish? You know? She said, well, nothing. I didn't take them. But I knew, obviously, that she didn't. She was jealous of So I said, now, look, this boy on the show is just my pretend, uh, my right pretend boy. boy. And I love you the most, most, most. And he's just my pretend son. And he made these because we're friends. But I love you the best. She really looked at that as a threat. Yeah, she thought it was like something that was really going to be, hey, that's my dad. So I said, where are the fish? And she yeah. denied. She went with it all the way. That, I never yeah. thought of that. They'd be jealous of the fictional yeah. uh, child. Well, the next day when I, came, when I came down from work, there were fish all over my coat. And oh. she, it was so cute. She had made, like, like I had, you know, gippers and flippers. And there, I, <laughs> all of them had a complete jacket. Sweet. It was so adorable. That it's, That's a sweet story. Yeah. She'd it, be jealous of a fictional character. Yeah, yeah. Well, Twelve, she's not the dating age yet. I mean, twelve's a little, little no, young. Not in, in this city, it's not. Are you I, kidding? No. It's really like, you know, in, in this city, they grow up. I mean, she's starting to become like, she's getting a figure and starting to spend money like women, you know. All yes, that yes. Well. And she has these boys, you know, and I've, I don't want her to date any guys like me. You know, so I'm trying to be very protective of this sort of, And guys will call up and they have that real major California accent, you know. Mr. Hudson's here? It's this Gianni. I go to Milanese school. Is Gianni here? What is this guy saying? Yeah. Melanie, this, this kid named Yanni's on the phone. So she goes, oh, daddy. She gets the phone, and I pick it up, and I unscrew the receipt, and I'm listening to see what's going on. You don't. I, no, I, come on. I know. I, re I really do. And I hear, hey, little Melanie, I think you're the groovy chicken skew. <laughs> skew. Skew. So I figure, okay, this kid is innocent enough, hangs up the phone. The phone rings again, and all of a sudden it's, hey, yo, Melanie. <laughs> it's like a nine-year-old Sylvester Stallone. Stallone is calling? <laughs> no. <laughs> It was he. He, had, he met her in camp, and it was like, "Hey, Millie, I met you in camp, and I gotta tell you, you're the grooviest chick. Here's my number." And he gives him the number. Call me anytime. 
Did Hank? you did you call him? No. <laughs> <laughs> Say, don't call don't anymore. Call. No, you know what I did do? I take her to camp in the summer, back and forth, and I wanted to see what Rocky looked like. I mean, this kid, I felt like the other kid was like a nice little boy. This kind of right. felt like a, a threat. Right. And and I'm telling you, a parental god was looking on me because this kid came down and he was. Hey, hey, right. you Melanie. Yeah. And, you know, and I was kind of hiding in the bushes. Knuckles just, on the floor type of guy? Real sort yeah. of guy. I don't want my daughter today, you know. No. And now that they're, you know, they come to that age. You have a lot to look forward to. Ooh, yeah, wait. Well, it's nice to have boys. <laughs> yeah, yes, I guess it is, isn't it? I have to hold this up and we'll be back. Here's a word about Scripto Electro Disposable Lighters. Take a look. We shall be back. Okay, David Horowitz is with us tonight. He appears regularly on the Today Show. He has a syndicated newspaper column, and he is the host of NBC's Fight Back. Would you welcome, please, Mr. David Horowitz. Okay, David. As you know, we're, all, we're a little short of time, so let's... All right, we'll, what do we got we'll just here? get right into it. Here, we'll save these for dessert, Johnny. All right. We'll save the hamburgers for dessert. Now, Johnny, I want you to open up. These right. are wonderful, by the way. They taste great. There's nothing wrong with this product, Almost Home Cookies. Right. Now, open them up, Johnny. All right. I want you to tell me what you see inside that package. I see... Now, first of all, you look through You look through the window, and what do you think is in there? Uh, cookies. Yes, that's right, but how many, Johnny? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's after you open it. Now, let's just dump the cakes out. Yeah. And let's look at the little tray inside. Oh, I see what you're talking about. There's a little... Now, you know we talk about fighting back. Right. People fought back against this. Ah, uh, so it makes them look like the whole box is... That's right. ...completely full of cookies. But what happened is that Nabisco... Yeah. ...paid $250,000 in fines for this really? type of packaging. And they're going to change their package. That's because the folks who complained about it yeah. went back. I got all a little right. yeah. so. All right, David. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. Okay. Yeah. Now, Johnny, you know that... Read those labels. Read those labels. You know, you know the question that they ask on commercials, where's the beef? Yeah. Where's the beef? You have a hamburger. I, say, I, I hamburger. say it's under there. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Open it up, Johnny, and let's take a look. <laughs> now, what is, what, what's going on here? Here you, is you the got... beef, Johnny. Well, you got a, a little chocolate chip cookie. But according to the box of McDonald's own chocolatey chip cookies, what it says in the ingredients is what is in those cookies? Enriched wheat flour. Yes. What do you mean? Go down, go down. Containing niacin, iron, thiamine, muntrite, vitamin B, and riboflavin. Beef. Beef? <laughs> you know, McDonald's says it in a big way. Beef, fat, sugar. What do you mean beef? In the right. cookies, there's Let beef? me tell you what happened. Someone went in and bought these cookies. Another aware consumer went in and bought McDonald's chocolatey chip cookies. Right. Thought there was beef in the cookies. Got very upset. Complained to McDonald's about it and found out that there was no beef in the cookies, but the label said beef, and it should have said beef fat instead of having a comma between the beef and the fat. Ah. So what do you think McDonald's did? I don't know, David. <laughs> What did McDonald's do? Well, Johnny, McDonald's changed its box. Good for them. And they should have. Read those labels. Read those labels. Anyway, Johnny, here's some, something that I'm sure a lot of people have seen. It's a garage floor and driveway cleaner. You have it in your house to pick up oil spots. You know, you often cannot trust the anecdotes. I mean, pardon me, the antidotes. Or you the antidotes. Trust the antidotes, or the antidotes. <laughs> For the antidotes on the back of, of packages, mm -hmm. particularly this one, which I'd like Mr. Carson to read. Contains what? Well, here it tells you what to do in case you Contains so accidentally far. drink or eat driveway. Clean. May cause burns, avoid contact. <laughs> Flush with water for 15 minutes and get medical attention. Avoid breathing dust. Do not take internally. No. <laughs> if accidentally swallowed, give vinegar or juice of lemon and follow with olive. <laughs> Call physician. Follow with olive? They mean olive oil, don't they? Johnny, we did a thorough investigation to find out why anyone who would swallow driveway cleaner would follow it with an olive. <laughs> Anybody come up with an answer? We got no answer. The company was out of business. <laughs> we just figured maybe the guy who was I'll writing... I bet they the... meant olive oil. Either that or the guy who was writing the antidote was the same guy, martinis. The same guy who did this did that beef thing. 
Probably the Probably. same guy, you know, not related. Oh, we got another minute here. Here's, here's another minute, Johnny. I want you to look at this shirt, and I want you to read the label on here. Uh, La Chemise. And then there's a name, right? Cacherelle. Cacherelle. Excellent shirt manufacturer. What makes it a truly French shirt? <laughs> Made in Hong Kong. <laughs> We had more time. Uh, anyway, the, the trick is to read those labels. That's right. Also read War and Peace if you have a moment. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you for being here. Thank you, Mark, for being with us. Much success on the show, and maybe next year, Bob. <laughs> Thanks for doing this. I'm humbled by that applause.